You're seriously watching SpongeBob by yourself? Nah, I'm with my boys! <laughs> boys! Boys! <laughs> Come on, SpongeBob <laughs> boys! Yeah, boy. Boy, boy, boy. Woo! <laughs> oh, welcome to the show Amazing. where we watch randomly generated SpongeBob episodes from the later seasons generated by a random number generator, and you are not ready. I don't even <laughs> think I'm ready, and I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late now. Nice to see you. I'm Gus. I'm here with uh, Lexi and Henry. Hello. And Hello. Uh, what 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 are you drinking today, folks? Uh, do you want to go first, Lexi? I, I have a prediction as to what yours is, but... Uh... Uh, I'll let you say first. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. Photosynthesis. Nice. Oh. I have nothing to drink right now. <laughs> We're not worthy. I have <laughs> some uh, Lipton's Raspberry Ice Tea, a uh, kind of blue juice drink, and one can of beer that you might have just heard the click from, which is called Plunged Orange Pale Ale, and I purely picked it because it had a picture of, like, a diving helmet underwater on the cover. Nice. Spongebob themed. Nice. I am drinking the monkey's chain, the monkey's fist, the monkey, as in sour monkey is the name of the beer. Nice. That, that's an unpleasant name for a beer. Ooh, would you like to drink from the sour monkey? <laughs> oh, I do. It's very good. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the monkey's fist. Like... It grants you wishes every time you take a sip. That sounds like it'd be like a hard banana juice. Yes. I drink banana juice. <laughs> oh, I'd try that out. Oh, I love a bit of banana juice, mate. The monkey's made. fist. Anyway, happy belated birthday, Lexi. Thank you. Yes, happy birthday. Yeah, it may seem weird that we're bringing this up on the show, but it's because Lexi did something very special for this birthday. Would you like to talk us through it? Because I know that Gus has quite a limited knowledge of this. <laughs> so... I wouldn't be on this show if I wasn't a Spongebob super fan. Uh, so I had a Spongebob themed birthday party because I'm an adult and I'm allowed to do what Very I want. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is I didn't like set out to have a party. My original idea was I'm going to make something special for my birthday. And that was about it. I didn't expect like a party or anything. My parents, my family, because I, I moved also. That's a big thing. Back to Florida. Plus it's more country. Yes. Riley land. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and close to Orlando. Or, close to Orlando with Nick Studios. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm with my parents here. Uh, they they all threw me like a semi-surprise party. Oh, how very nice. Oh, that's so good. There's like a little crusty crab. There's water. There's things in the pool. What are those? They're um, aquarium houses of the neighborhood oh i see yeah oh my god yeah that's bikini bottom down there <laughs> oh my god and doodle bob's here wow oh this is nice this is classy lexi is currently proven she outranks us in the spongebob <laughs> boys hierarchy yes yeah, so the the mini krabby patties are like the big thing that i wanted to do for my birthday so they're actually cupcakes and I, I can walk you oh through the ingredients. God. It's great. So you have... I, th I see a strawberry in there. Yep. So we've got um, yellow cake cupcakes for the buns. Lightly buttered on top for the sesame seeds to stick. Brownie for the patty. Vanilla frosting with food coloring for the cheese. And then little slices of strawberry for tomato. And then a green fruit roll-up for lettuce. Oh my god. Damn. <laughs> I sure hope Plankton isn't listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> the Krabby Patty <laughs> secret formula. Lexi's cracked it. <laughs> and then, and then, so you probably see those, like, chum buckets in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mom made um, chum bucket smoothies. Oh my god. Where I think it's it's watermelon juice, blackberry, strawberry, and blueberry. You're living the dream. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. We had a good day. Oh my day. god. Everyone is very jealous. Leave a comment about how jealous you are about Lexi's Spongebob party. No, leave a comment telling us why you deserve to go to Lexi's next Spongebob party. <laughs> and from that, we'll yeah, weed exactly. out the week and pick the people who are allowed to come and show up at the most hopping Spongebob yeah. party. 
imaginable. You have to come wearing one of those completely illegal shirts that we definitely didn't Yeah, the, the squid happens. <laughs> squid happens. <laughs> and the Lexi Why Waste a Bullet shirt. <laughs> Anyone who actually gets a Why Waste a Bullet shirt will have a Krabby Cake made by me, specifically. Yeah, they'll be put on a list. A mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> on FBI uh, list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, exactly. My, my sister got me a, a shirt that says this is a load of barnacles on it, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so sweet. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> that is the power of SpongeBob to just bring together like families, friends, everyone. And now, and now we have to delve into the part of the show where we tear that all apart over and over exactly. again uh, yes. for the rest of our lives. Well, I mean, the thing is, we we <laughs> had to start this episode with something nice and wholesome. Because we finished what was potentially the previous one with fucking Squid Baby. So I oh, thought, thought it makes sense to get uh, Lexi's. Do you know what would be amazing? If you could also, like, you get the cakes, but for, like, beforehand, you get, like, Krabby Patty, like, sliders. But yeah, just, like, little Krabby Patty burgers that are, like, actual little burgers to have beforehand and then sweet Krabby Patties for dessert. Yeah, you just eat everything in the shape of a burger, but it's a fully, like, balanced it's so funny, bre- like, breakfast, we dinner, did dessert. We did have uh, burgers for dinner. <laughs> so, oh, that's fucking amazing. So we grilled. We had, like, a micro luau by the pool. I, w- I would eat these all day, every day. <laughs> It'd go straight to my thighs, and then I'd blow up. <laughs> and then you'd blow up. <laughs> <laughs> you like Krabby Patties, don't you, Henry? <laughs> All right, so who's going to begin this fucking nightmare today? I think it would be better to explain what we're doing this time around, because uh, we're not going for the full three-hour powwow that we did last time. And thank God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, people love that video. That was the most popular SpongeBob boys ever. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> but I don't think I want to keep it, like going <laughs> no gee, no that's for special occasions these ungrateful fucks don't get that every time <laughs> and here's the thing if we make spongebob boys consistent if we have like a like set way then people will finally get ready for it and we could never have that exactly. that's true that could never be a thing we would allow so to explain what lexi was saying uh this time what we did was uh decided okay Each of us would do one for the most part and would use a random number generator to see who got two. And because it seems that Lexi is still sparkling with birthday magic, she got the privilege of having two episodes today. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, Lexi, the algorithm let you have two episodes. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. I feel honored. (laughs) So shall we do, to mix things up, Lexi, me... Lexi, Gus. Because I did last time with Squid Baby, and I don't fancy that role again. (laughs) I could bookend. Oh, that's true. That's true. How would you prefer to do it, Lexi? Do you want to bookend or, like, leave room for Jesus? It's up to you. (laughs) I think you mentioned Jesus, and he doesn't belong in this show. We only only worship under under Jesus over here. A.K.A. Nick Withers. (laughs) Under Poseidon. Yeah, yeah. So I say uh, I'm in support of the bookend plan. Uh, Lexi will be the bread of the Krabby Patty, and Henry, you and I will be the, the meat and veggies. Us two have to fight over yeah. who is the cheese and who is the patty. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm a fucking tomato. Oh, you slick fuck. All right, Lexi, take <laughs> it away. What's, what's the first uh, thing in this cabaret of horrors? <laughs> you want to present to us. All right, so I'm doing both uh, shows from season seven, episode one. So another uh, best foot forward (laughs) kind of deal. Yeah, well, hopefully it will have less foot action than House Fancy. (laughs) Oh! So first one is called Tentacle Vision. Okay. I think I've seen this one. Oh, is, yeah. this, is this fucking Zeus the Guitar Lord? Yes, it's Zeus the Guitar Lord. Yes! Okay, we're in this. We're in this. I peaked the mic like a motherfucker. Woo! Okay, I Lexi, have a feeling that this. there's a lot of people that did see these, ep- these episodes, so... This would be a delightful romp down there. to give them made. some of the familiar. Yeah. yeah. Going in, I, you know, I didn't realize the... I, I don't think I've seen this particular episode, or if I did, it was like once years ago. 
So Mm -hmm. my first note here is, after my birthday party, this feels like getting dunked into a freezing lake after sitting in a sauna. Oh my god. (laughs) Just getting back into the show. (laughs) There you go. Just open up the ceiling and unleash the snakes. (laughs) (laughs) The tentacles. Yeah, oh Um, god. The tentacles, oh no. (laughs) So we start uh, nighttime in Bikini Bottom. Squidward is up at 5 a.m. to watch, quote, intelligent programming, which is just his the shopping Squidward channel. way of saying public access. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a show called Fab and Fancy, and I'm praying to Jesus I don't see Nicholas Withers again. Oh, that would have been so scary. It's always these fancy shows, isn't it? I mean, it makes sense with Squidward, because he's a guy who like fantasizes about living like an opulent life like Squilliam. That's true. So we get a, a little bit of like what you could say is padding, but it kind of works because it's it's working up to like the punchline. So you get like this opening for Fab and Fan. Uh, what is it called? Fab and Fancy. I have, like exotic pets, and they show like snails wearing jewelry and crowns and stuff, <laughs> and jewel encrusted mittens, classical doorbell chimes, <laughs> and it's all building up mm. to the announcement that it's been canceled. <laughs> oh. Oh. We've all been there, though, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sadly. And, Henry, it has been replaced by a show called The Guitar Lord, hosted by Zeus, the gu- the titular Guitar Lord. A name that we have literally oh wholesale stolen for Alessis Morg season two. So I know, to... I... Either it was, it's a great minds think alike thing, or this was stolen, or forgotten about and brought back from the depths of his memory and not realized. Crypto amnesia, <laughs> as they call it, I believe. Or it's just proof that, like, maybe our minds just aren't so great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that we're, we're thinking like this. We're living like Larry, if you will. You know what they say, all roads lead to Zeus the Guitar Lord. Oh, God. It's true. It's phrase. true. So yeah. one of the funny things is, so he's, you know, Zeus the Guitar Lord. He's like, hi, I don't have a guitar, but I would like to get... Ha- to have one and he pulls up this um poster he holds this flyer of a red flying v guitar so like you know those um ones that are like they look like they're boomerang shaped yeah yeah, i get you um with quote super cool strings loud and axe (laughs) written in several different fonts i love that (laughs) that would shut up and take my money that would convince me to buy and i can't even play guitar yeah zeus shows a telephone number on the screen and squid calls him like a karen and asks if they give anyone a show so he's upset that his show is being replaced by this calls him up and he's just like, will they just give anybody a show? And he's like, well, yeah, I got this show. It was a birthday present from my mom. That was the last thing you got after the SpongeBob party. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're watching the, the Lexi Bristow show coming out next week. <laughs> and none of us are invited. Public access. <laughs> uh, Squid hang, hangs up and calls the public access station and asks for his own show. So, like, literally, like, hangs up, picks the phone back up, dials the public access. And he goes, I want a show. I want a show. I sh- want a show. Give it to me. <laughs> just like, that's pretty funny classy <laughs> classy squid yeah it's this episode is really funny <laughs> come on squid we'll just make a youtube channel like the rest of us <laughs> then you can talk about any crazy shit and some people will find it <laughs> what do you think this show is <laughs> imagine squidward watching spongebob boys oh <laughs> that's the, the, that's my dream <laughs> they'd write it in They'd write it in. Yeah. They, they wrote in Squidward's suicide into an episode. They can do that. Yeah. Hey, Nick, cool. we're talking to you. And yeah. I'm not going to specify which Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Either right. way, make it happen. Okay, so bubble wipe to the Krusty Krab, and Squid is eagerly waiting for his shift to end. SpongeBob happens on Squidward's <laughs> mention of basking the in the t-shirt. limelight. <laughs> yes. Squid <laughs> happens, SpongeBob They're happens. companion pieces. Exactly. So, uh... He comes on and he's just instantly obnoxious. Of course. <laughs> like, uh, like he, he says five words and I'm already done listening to SpongeBob. <laughs> just from how he's speaking. I don't know what it is. He's just extra annoying. What are the words? Oh, uh, curiosity. No. Oh, uh, he says something like basking in the limelight. <laughs> something like that. He drags Whoa. something out and it's like, why? Why did you say it like that? And why did you say it weird? <laughs> it's, it's I hate this. It's just five different yeah. slurs in a row. Just like <laughs> oh, massively no. like bigoted Spongebob for no God. reason. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Please. 
okay, so Squid is reluctant to brag to SpongeBob. Uh, um, ooh, sorry. He's reluctant to brag to SpongeBob, SpongeBob. about his new show because he's afraid that he's gonna come around and like ruin it. A reasonable so, fear. Um, but he convinces himself to do it if SpongeBob plugs his ears and Squidward reaches into the kitchen, grabs two whole Krabby Patties, and then just shoves them into SpongeBob's head. So you <laughs> another fun party activity for any Krusty Krab party <laughs> near you. <laughs> mm. It's mm. just like the yeah. show. What was that sports noise you made? <laughs> that was like shoving the Krabby Patties into my ears. No, but but it sounded like a real splorge. You did such a good job with that. Well, I, just, I just made it with my, like like that with my mouth. <laughs> Lexi, are you hearing this? Yes, I am. Lexi, I'm very can't, impressed. Can't you do it's... a splorge? You're a voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> You're more experienced at this than me. Maybe it's just Gus. That's <laughs> I can do like cartoony ones. That's a pretty good sport. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Sorry, Lexi. Please continue. <laughs> Welcome to SpongeBob Boys. <laughs> Welcome to Sports Boys. Sports Bob Boys. Spingle Bib. Sports Boys. Spingle Bib. All right, so Spingle Bib Sports Pants. So now that SpongeBob can't hear him, Squidward gloats. SpongeBob only hears like muffled squid noises through the entire burgers in his ears, um, and then. He, he rambles on until his shift ends, and Squid just bolts out of the Krusty Krab. We've all been there. And then uh, makes a beeline towards the station. So Squid's show is called Squidward Chat. Uh-huh. <laughs> Squid's show is called Less is Morgue. It's a show <laughs> where a squid talks about stuff. <laughs> oh my god. I love this note. So his office looks like that 60s Spider-Man meme of him at a desk with several portraits of him on the wall. <laughs> Oh that's my amazing. god! That's that's a real note. I put it. I forgot about that. <laughs> get me more pictures of Squidward Man. No, get me more pictures of Patrick Man. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I need more pictures of Patrick Man. Think Squidward. Think. All right. Uh, mm. uh. So and then he's like, "Welcome to Squidward Squidward Chat. We're going to be talking about unappreciated artists like myself." This is Les's oh. book. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Riley. Oh my god. You're right. I think that's literally oh. how they start episode 13. <laughs> yeah. Oh my uh, god. Is all of Les's book just the... lifted from Tentacle Vision? <laughs> who's the guest this time? Moof? Yeah. <laughs> Moof sees Squidward on the TV, and again, it seems most programming is broadcast as live. And SpongeBob rus- mm. rushes into Squidward's house. Where the filming is happening. <laughs> so let me say that mm. again. SpongeBob. So Gary is watching TV. He turns the TV on. He sees Squidward's show playing. SpongeBob sees Squidward on TV. He runs over to Squidward's house where the show is being broadcasted live. Where, where they just bring all of this like expensive like film equipment. Yes, and a false back. Uh, as someone who's like worked for a few different public access stations like as like an unpaid intern this is not this is exactly how it doesn't work exactly it's just like i would love it if this episode like basically turned into like network where like squidward has these kinds of like mental breakdowns but he like speaks to like the popular like vein of anger among the people (laughs) Like, does this whole, like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore type shit. And then in the end, Mr. Krabs assassinates him because his ratings aren't <laughs> doing well. It's it's Squidward in Loquitia. Oh, no! <laughs> Why'd you have to speak that into the universe? Funny, Funnily enough, I didn't. I, like, I had no reason to. So, yes, yeah, SpongeBob crashes the broadcast. Um, I lost my place because of Laquisha. Um, the next few scenes... <laughs> I, I'm not sorry. I know you're not. It's fine. The next few scenes are shown to us through a TV screen. So I, I kind of felt like that was clever. 
Just like, oh, neat. Mm, that's fun. And as the show goes on, I'm going to, f- I, I forgot to write it down, but that gag of showing us through a TV screen is sh- uh, used as like a transitional device. And I'll, I'll, you'll see why. So SpongeBob realizes that he too is on TV and he leaves <laughs> to bring Patrick. <laughs> Oh, no. On TV. Oh, no. I have a note here that says, why does Squidward not have a lock on his door? And if he does, why doesn't he use it? SpongeBob, like, sprays it with Freon to freeze it and then smacks it with a crowbar. (laughs) (laughs) So... So I'm guessing I'm guessing there's no crew. It's just Squidward with like a camera. Oh yeah, it's it's just Squidward having set up the the scene for himself. I'm guessing because he's only gonna be in one spot. Why would this be live? Why would this be live? If public television actually worked like this, I might actually watch it because it would be the most interesting thing ever. Because it would solely be like absolute nutters. From, like, their homes. And another funny joke that comes up. So, Patrick is now on TV. He doesn't quite understand what's happening. Because Spongebob says, Patrick, you're on TV now. What? I have to check. And Patrick runs all the way back home to check his own TV. Doesn't see himself. Runs back. (laughs) And asks Spongebob why he lied to him. Squidward (laughs) asks how dumb he is. And Patrick replies... It varies. <laughs> well, I mean, points for that, honesty. That's entirely yeah. fair, yeah. <laughs> that's just that, real. That, that's a pretty good successor, too. Don't you have to be stupid somewhere else? Not until five. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good. Through my head an mm-hmm. accident. So Patrick now realizes how TV works, apparently. Live streaming, really. Um, he starts moving. He starts. <laughs> Squidward became a streamer. He starts hot tub streaming. Ah, no! <laughs> Goolagoon streams. Beth. Ha, hey, Squidward, how many bits to get my name written on your big head? <laughs> on your nose. Yeah. On your nose! <laughs> this is chaos. Oh, this is pure fucking chaos. Chaos, anyway. confusion. Remember that squids have seven tentacles and they're all dick. Anyway, ah! <laughs> remember that. Remember that squid happens. Squid happens. This is gonna be the best SpongeBob. Why episode. waste the bullet? Okay. Um. Hey. Woo. <laughs> uh, Are you feeling it, Mr. Krabs? I'm sorry. He, uh, Patrick, realizing how TV works, he starts shoving his whole mouth over the lens, and we cut to like an orchestral sting, as we see a live action mouth. <laughs> Like, just, like, open and showing the uvula and all that stuff. Oh. Vor just keeps following us around, doesn't it? We cannot no fucking one said escape that. now. No one said that this had to be Vor. It's just the mouth. You're in Patrick's live-action mouth. God, imagine being yeah. a poor bastard around, like, unless they use stop God, you can even see someone's, like, crown fillings, too. It's like, uh, I, I don't want to be that far in someone's mouth, please. I'm not a dentist. I wonder yeah. if, like, they use stock footage or if it was, like, look, who, who in the office wants to volunteer to, <laughs> to come deep throat a camera? They don't like even ask. Minutes. They just get the unpaid interns to just open their mouth in front of a camera. <laughs> Some guy just like runs I up behind you and like, hey, stomps on your foot and as you scream, just shoves a camera <laughs> into your mouth. <laughs> like a Looney Tunes thing. So we do that, like, you know, the whole, like, we're seeing it through a TV screen thing. Mm-hmm. And we cut to who's looking at this screen in particular. And it's some poor grandma. And she just goes, this is disgusting. Me <laughs> too, grandma. Back. I identify with that grandma now. Yeah, she's the most relatable character in this so far. Zeus the Guitar Lord also. Oh, true, true. Can't forget Zeus. This is classic mm. Zeus Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> this Good is old Zeus's Zeus. episode, quite honestly. Yeah. This is Zeus's episode. We just live in it. So SpongeBob and Patrick are now just fucking around with the camera. There's no other film staff, by the way. This is when I actually finally acknowledge that there's no film staff. Of course. Yeah! Oh, right. fucking course. Squidward killed them all. Squidward just shouts, would you get out of here? Patrick, again, just goes, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like Dr. Manhattan. He's like, we're all puppets. <laughs> the only difference is that I can see the strings. <laughs> no, literally, that would explain so much about Patrick. Dr. Pat Hatton. 
Dr. Patton. Stop. <laughs> I heard you the first time. God damn it. <laughs> well, <sighs> that's the thumbnail. That's Yeah, that's the thumbnail. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I, I want to actually draw that too. Fuck. Good. Boom, we got it. Statistically, <laughs> Patrick in the thumbnail is successful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. <sighs> Sorry, Lexi. Uh, so now Squid gives them sound and cameramen jobs. Patrick is pointing the camera at all the portraits of Squidward instead of real Squidward. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Good. And then it just comes, and then it starts devolving into him just moving the camera up and down, up and down. And Squidward's just like, Patrick, stop. <laughs> so then video. Squid just walks over and ties him to the camera to keep him still. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Spongebob was given the boom mic and is doing all the boom mic jokes you can think of. Does it go in Squidward's mouth? I swear that happened. Like, he lowers it too much and he's just like... Argh. Yep. Yep, there we go. He gets Squid oh, to no. deep throat the boom mic. <laughs> A very oral focus on this episode. Uh, yeah, so it, it, you know, it dangles in the, in the shot, shoves it into Squidward's mouth, he smacks him over the head with it. <laughs> I bet right. someone has taken a screen cap of that and put the Brazos logo in God. the corner. <laughs> ah. oh, I missed so that meme. He's like, Spongebob, what are you doing? And Spongebob's like, it's heavy. So then Squid just <laughs> takes the boom mic and shoves it into Spongebob's head. And he's just like, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, just stick it straight up. Through his sponge holes. And it's, no. Yes, but No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean anything by it. I'm just saying that's what happened. <laughs> Brazzers. Why waste Brazzers. the bullet? Brazzers. Yeah. So on that note, we pull out from the screen again, and we see that Mr. Krabs is sprawled out on his couch watching the show, and he realizes it's Squidward. So Mr. Krabs butts in with a huge eat at the Krusty Krab sign. Of course. Oh, and course. advertising for people to eat there. Uh, we change our grease oh monthly God. is a line that is read. That's going to be prophetic later. That will be fucking <laughs> oh prophetic no! later. Oh, no. No, no. Just, okay. just everyone at home, hold grease, grease's like, replaced monthly in your head. Just have that for later. Anyway, sorry, Lexi, please continue. Oh, so he's Squidward shoves him out of frame, but then he dances back into frame. And in Mr. Krabs dancing, we pull out and see Sandy is seeing the broadcast. I'm sorry. She goes, I can lie and dance better than that. And starts dancing in the frame. <laughs> oh, my God. I like that it remembers she's from Texas. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It's good. And then, you know, on Sandy dancing we pull back out of the screen again to see that pearl walks in looking for her father because she's borrowing his wallet of course and she sees this she sees the screen and she goes line dancing ew what they need is my hip new cheer routine and she quite literally crashes onto squidward's desk pearl is an underrated character i like pearl i know i'm glad that they remembered that she existed <laughs> In this, honestly. But it's, uh, here's the thing. All the while I'm watching this, I'm just thinking that this would be the craziest episode of Eric Andre if this happened on, yes. on his on his show. Yeah, it's yeah! Like, the desk got destroyed. This is Eric Andre in Spongebob. Squidward unironically, or, or, sorry. Squidward accidentally inventing Eric Andre like, I am the octopus. <laughs> oh, fucking damn it. <laughs> Morpheus walruses. Please, sir, will you get, pay my expenses to Orlando? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pull out from Pearl breaking the desk. Plankton is watching and says, Oh, please, I can cause way more collateral damage than that. <laughs> Karen, where'd you put my death ray? <laughs> oh, my that. God. Oh, yeah. So then we see the screen again. And all you see now is Sandy on the left, line dancing. Pearl going, go, team, go, on the right. Plankton appearing with the death ray and shooting several holes into the walls. And Squidward in the middle, just looking really sad. Oh, this episode is great. Yeah. It, it's so chaotic. Like, I'm... 
I'm thinking like, no, there's there's a more natural through line to all these notes that I'm taking. No, this is literally just how it happens on screen. <laughs> it knew it was your birthday and decided to be merciful. <laughs> God. It's super weird, but like it feels like some of the best modern SpongeBob episodes are the one where they just like have all the cast just do their bits really well. Like, yeah, because it's the same with the same Madness. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough, I do um, suggest watching both of these episodes that I'm going to be coming in. I'm just going to spoil it. They're pretty good. How about that? <laughs> cool. That's a lovely surprise. <laughs> All right, so what happens next? Mm. So, um, Plankton goes, eat at the chum bucket or perish. Which, <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> he has his, like, antithesis of whatever Mr. Krabs is doing. <clears throat> He's allowed to be evil again. Mm. Squid starts crying. Sponge says, you look tense, and massages his shoulders before Squid just pushes him off. Just cut that out. And now Squid starts trying to throw people out, and he says the line, what do you think this is, a housewarming? Larry is in the doorway (laughs) saying, hey, everyone, it's a housewarming. And he and a bunch of fish pack together into Squidward's house, and the cheeks of his Easter Island head, like, swell up like chipmunk cheeks. That's a great visual <laughs> Oh, gag. my God. That's <laughs> really that's good. Funny. I was dying. The show remembered <laughs> it's a cartoon. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> also, fucking Larry. Just causing more chaos. He's living, <laughs> living like Larry. Living like Larry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, a public access executive walks in and says that the show is doing very well. He put he pulls out a tiny money bag, and he says, "This is actually a lot by public access standards." That's really funny as well. That's a really <laughs> That's a good, good joke. joke, actually. And he says, "It's all working except for you." And he points at a ladyfish. You. He points at a little kidfish. And you. And he points at Squidward. Oh. And oh. It, it, all three of them get kicked out of Squidward's house. So then, so then we bubble transition to Squidward in bed watching TV in his bedroom. And his show is now number one for 20 weeks straight and is renamed Squidward's House Party, hosted by Zeus the Guitar Lord. <laughs> That's such a good joke. He finally got his guitar. Sandy and Pearl are dancing. SpongeBob is playing keyboard. Mr. Krabs is on a suspension rope with his sign still. And Plankton is the laser show technician. <laughs> This is how you write a Squidward torture porn episode. <laughs> this is the good way to Emotional do it. Emotional torture porn. Wait, why is it that whenever all the SpongeBob people come together and play in a band, it's a great episode? Like, why is that every single time it happens? You can't spend too much time on each of them enough for them to fuck up, so I guess it just works out. That's actually a really good point. That They're forced <laughs> to do, like, at least, like, one thing with each one. Because Sandy literally said one thing. Pearl said one thing. <laughs> what are you doing, what Henry? You this is me on uh, opening a bag of gummy strawberries because I'm hungry. It won't be as mm. noisy now. Unopening it? No, <laughs> un- yeah, I'm sealing it up with like a candle. <laughs> no, I'm opening it to, to yeah. eat the, the delicious strawberries within. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> a wax seal on the, these uh. chips. <laughs> with the, like a letter house. opener yeah <laughs> um, so then the episode uh, closes out with Squidward stomping on his floor to get them to turn the noise down cause they're all still in his living room this poor he's bastard. just living <laughs> and the show ends on a shot of Squid's house full of people oh my that is God. how it feels to live in uni halls that's how it fucking feels. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, this is how it feels to be Squidward, I think. Like, there's just a party all around you, and you're never allowed to be a part of it. That's a great metaphor for depression. <laughs> God. Yeah. That's Squidward. Uh. But anyway, that was a Tentacle Vision. A very cursed title, but a very good watch. Yeah, I saw another film called Tentacle Vision a while back. It wasn't quite as wholesome as this, but... <laughs> Was it on the iceberg list, by chance? Yeah, it was on the iceberg list. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like tier seven from the makers of Genki Genki. Yes, yes. Speaking of, do you want to rattle off the uh, name of your episode, Henry? All right, so I'll go next. My episode is called Greasy Buffoons, 
which <laughs> I believe is meant to be a play on like Greasy Spoon, but let's be honest, is just not close enough for it to be wordplay. Yeah, it sounds bad. <laughs> Yeah, it made, it just made me think of the Greasy Strangler, which is another like weird cursed movie. And um, you could be lying to me right now, and I would I wouldn't even know. I swear to God, I like I am telling the <laughs> truth. I wish I was lying to you, Lexi. I wish I was. <laughs> the amount of stuff that you've seen, just the title alone, the sound of it, like just ooh, this is weird. Are you sure this exists? Well, just. The, the <laughs> shit that I've put into my eyeballs. Like, if my eyes were into a person, them. they'd kill me. Just in revenge. <laughs> and no one, like, no one would convict them for it. Anyway, so are you ready for greasy buffoons? No, let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's the Spongebob boy spirit. So, uh, <laughs> the episode begins with um, someone ordering a Krabby Patty, and it's the classic filler opening where it's a dude who just doesn't know what to order, and he's just going like, uh... And then Squidward makes the mistake of asking whether he wants, like, large or medium fries, and it starts again. It's, it's the exact same joke with Patrick in the uh, Krusty Krab training video, but just not as funny, because mm-hmm. diminishing returns. So, Spongebob passes him a burger, but the burger is, like, so greasy that it's the whole meal slips out of Spongebob's hands... I just fucking beans this guy in the face. But the guy picks like a fry off of his head and goes, Hey, that's what I call fast food. Eats the fry and walks away. At least it isn't Squidward getting hit with the food for once. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, this is a largely just very weird episode, but it has one absolutely phenomenal joke. One? Yeah, Mm. one. But like, it's it's so good. Meg and I, we watched it together... We watched it, paused it because we were laughing so hard, then replayed it to laugh again. I can't wait. SpongeBob and Squidward petition Mr. Krabs that, like, uh, they really need to clean out the grease trap. They open, like, a trap door in the floor, and there is, like, this 20-foot-tall, nightmarish, like, grease trap contraption. Like, it looks like something a fucking Bond villain would lower someone into. Oh. Like, oh my god. Like, that's what this thing looks like. And they're like, and like, we don't even know the last time it was cleaned out. And Mr. Krav says, oh, cleaning this out is going to be a three-man job. The kind of job that only a pair of unpaid volunteer workers could help me with. And Mr. Krabs turns to look at both of them. Squidward's expression doesn't change. And he literally just fades and disappears. <laughs> it's just like... It looks like he's been like beamed up in Star Trek, and it is so funny. That's really good. That's the good joke, right? Yeah, that's the good joke, and that's fucking hilarious. It's literally a meme. Oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. It's literally that's that Homer meme. going into the bushes. But honestly, even funnier, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hold on to that. It's all what season from is here. this from, by the way? Uh, seven. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I, I, I chose an inopportune moment to eat another strawberry. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, it cuts to at night. Spon- and, like, Mr. Krabs has brought, like, a grease tankard truck. And they use, like, a pipe to, like, get the, the grease out of the trap and into the truck. And Mr. Krabs can't get it to work. And Spongebob is like, oh, don't worry. I know how to do this. And, like, he's, like, siphoning gas out of, like, a vehicle. And he starts sucking up the gas! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, anyway, yes. it sprays out all over Mr. Krabs. Sp- he sucks it. He sprays it on Mr. Krabs. He shoves it in. <laughs> it's just an episode where this, like, gross innuendo is unavoidable. And starts, like, <laughs> siphoning it into the vehicle. And then, in the dead of night, they just go and dump the grease behind the chum bucket. Uh, Spongebob says to Mr. Krabs, Hey, Mr. Krabs, like, are you sure this is legal? And Mr. Krabs just goes, Legal? Oh, no. (laughs) This is a primo Drayton Krabs episode, as we've coined in previous ones. Like, Mr. Mm -hmm. Krabs is, like, flanderized bad in this shit. And he has some nightmarish quotes in this. So the next day, Spongebob is, like, pondering whether it was right to do that the previous night. And Mr. Krabs says to him, And I quote, questions are a danger to you and a burden to others. That is terrifying. (laughs) 
But that's what a mob boss would say to someone. <laughs> yeah, that's like what happens if we... Well, that's a question, so I won't ask it. Yeah. Like, that's fucking terrifying. And he says that completely deadpan before walking away. Christ. So anyway, mm. Plankton mm. walks out of the chum bucket and, like, slips on the grease. Plankton, of course. Yeah, of course. So he walks out and he slips on the grease and he's like, oh, this is horrible. Then he, like, sucks on some of the grease off his hand and is like, oh, but it tastes delicious. And he starts yeah. making, like, chummy meals but filling them with crusty crab grease. Oh. And it suddenly makes the chum bucket super popular. Oh, God. I hate where this is going. Oh, it's so... Okay. All right, so, predictions. Lexi, where do you predict this is going? I don't know. Fair. Gus, where do you predict this is going? <laughs> I think Plankton's going to catch wind of the fact that this is crusty crab grease, and he's going to try and reverse engineer the formula, and something horrible and gross is going to happen as a result. The appetizer happens. <laughs> the second half is right. The first half is wrong. Oh. Because again, just having the grease in his chum makes it popular. And Mr. Krabs is like, ah, oh, two can play at that game. And he orders SpongeBob for every meal, cook two patties. One patty to actually use and the other one to just siphon the grease out of it. Ew. Onto the first patty. That's... I don't like the new grease meta. Yeah. Wouldn't you just take the grease from the from the first one, put it back in? What? Yeah. No, but the thing is... That doesn't make any sense! And they start framing it as the Krabby Patty Deluxe. Ugh. And it brings people over, and they start eating it more, and there's so many shots, like, people, like, biting into <sighs> it. That's so and, stupid, because like, Deluxe just means you have two patties in it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not a pat. It's not two patties. Why it's waste a pa patty? It's just two patties worth of grease. <laughs> oh, I love we've gone stupid. from why waste a bullet to with much more fury. Why waste a patty? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but then Plankton is like, okay, two can play at that game. I'm gonna start just selling the grease as soup. No, no, he, no, he doesn't do that. He starts selling just, like, fried, like, hardened chunks of grease as a meal. Uh, and then uh, the Krusty Krabs start selling Krabby Patty soup, which is just grease. I feel like you have something in your heart to say, Lexi. What is it? This is this is the Junji Ito book about grease. Yeah, oh, no, it's horrible. that one's bad. <laughs> That's how I'm oh, like. No. That's how I'm expecting it. Was it called like glyceride or something? That's so it's fucking. It's something awful. like that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> that that drink one's straight nasty. Grease. Much like the um the like one with Gene Scallop in it, you get lots of like weird shots of like kind of grotesquely like bloated grease covered fish Ugh. who can't stop themselves from eating all this grease. And um, I didn't realize this was both the grease one and Gyo. I, <laughs> I, I'm taking a cough drop <laughs> because I need something sweet to counteract the the thought to of dull grease. the pain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, to dull the grease. <laughs> anyway, so and then Patrick walks in, and Patrick is again like, you know, when they'll just like really like chub up Patrick and mm. portray it in like an yeah. uncomfortably. We'll give him moves. Yeah, like, he's got, like, defined moobs and, like, a gut and, like, all this other stuff. And he's, like, covered in grease. And SpongeBob is like, Patrick, no, not you too. And he hasn't had it yet. No, he, he has had it. He has had it. And he wants more oh, of okay. it. Oh, okay. Because this, like, grease, like, arms race will never end. And then this, like... See, that would have <laughs> been funny if Patrick hadn't got to it yet. Yeah, that <laughs> would have been... just naturally greasy. No, I thought that was the joke, because that is a joke. Yeah, like, that would have been funny. <laughs> Mean-spirited, but funny. And yeah. um, this whole thing just feels like the joke is just, look how, like, grotesque. Just grease everywhere. It's another thing where it just feels like this is so fucking specific, it feels like someone's into it. They're like, mm -hmm. that, that, like, general, yeah. like, sheen of perversity that a lot of new Spongebob has... <laughs> Yeah, that Ugh. that greasy sheen of pervertedness. So what? Is, so what are we thinking? It's a feeder fetish? No, no. I think it's like a mess fetish. Oh, oh, it's worse. 
Not messes in like shit, but like messes in like, ooh, look at look at how messy <laughs> That's not they what are. I was saying, but <laughs> I guess I'm glad it's not that kind of mess. I feel oh. like a greasy buffoon right now. I feel like <laughs> this this is the greasy buffoon. We said I need a shower after this episode. The reason I had to make that clarification is we did have the shit in Squid Baby. Oh. This military vehicle rolls up. And a fish in a full hazmat suit with gas mask gets out. And it turns out he's the health inspector. Oh, God. And he's like, what the? What is going on here? This is horrifying because like, the whole ground around both restaurants is covered in grease. You're so right that this does have like a Junji Ito vibe to it. And it's just like creepy, grotesque escalation that like Junji Ito is so... Like, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that we've got our like customary Junji Ito reference in so that one guy can get really pissed in the comments Slash about burn. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he died because he's never come back. Good. Um, anyway, so he is like, oh, who's responsible for this? And it turns out that SpongeBob called them in. But every time SpongeBob is trying to say that they're responsible... Mr. Krabs, like, hits him somehow to stop him, and in the end, throws him off a cliff. What? Oh my god! Drayton Krabs. Full-on Drayton Krabs. In the end, the health inspector says, I'm shutting both of your restaurants down for this, like, appalling health code violation until you can, like, clean up your act and get this shit sorted. To which I say, fucking amen, brother. (laughs) Like, yeah. The show's over! (laughs) Yeah. As with, like, you need to clean the shit up. And then, like, Mr. Krabs is crying, and Spongebob is, like, sympathetic to him. Shouldn't be, because, again, Mr. Krabs has been horrible in this episode. Oh, by the way, I just realized, I just remembered what Mr. Krabs said his, like, question quote after. It's after he says the two-patty thing, and Spongebob says, but wouldn't that be unhealthy? (laughs) Oh, no. So, it ends with... SpongeBob agreeing to help by just absorbing all of it, and he just becomes this huge, grotesque thing with, like, enlarged pores packed with grease. It's just really, really fucking gross to watch. And as SpongeBob is leaving, Patrick follows him and won't stop licking him. End of episode. Uh, uh, Ew! Gross! I can almost taste it. Uh, Yeah! (laughs) You're right! They took that thing that was a ridiculous joke and made it a, like a canonical instance in the show. <sighs> Don't say instance, it's making me think of skin theory. Oh, God. No, enough of that, enough of that. So yeah, that was Greasy Buffoons. It fucking sucked. Aside from that like one really good Squidward fading out joke. And it, th- because Squidward never returned to the episode, I assume he went to a better place. As he should. He, he disappeared to uh, tentacle vision. <laughs> exactly. See, see, I thought tentacle vision would be one where Squidward realizes that Bikini Bottom is a delusion and he's secretly controlling everyone subconsciously. <laughs> he just sends SpongeBob to the cornfield when he's uh, frustrated with him. Oh he meets another. He meets another Squidward, and they have a conversation about the ship of Theseus, and it's super deep. I'm gonna pretend I got that <laughs> reference. <laughs> Speaking of Gus, do you want to go next, and then uh, we'll end with Lexi's uh, nice sesame coated bun to finish this Krabby Patty of horror off. I've provided the grease. <laughs> God. All right. I guess I'll provide the meat. <laughs> so mm. here we go. With my episode called Sanctuary. Sanctuary. The most thing of fucking Quasimodo and uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Keep that image in your mind. The episode starts with SpongeBob walking Gary around like the roads of Bikini Bottom, and he's just saying some stuff like, "Oh ba- man, I love like a nice walk, don't you, Gary?" And um, Gary, before he can meow in response. There's another, like, more, like, uh, raspy meow is heard. Oh. And SpongeBob says something else, and then it repeats again. And they find, like, an old snail behind a rock, like, just off the road. Why are all of the Gary-focused episodes a little bit kind of ominous? Because Gary is secretly an ominous character. He's the Gary most intelligent speak. character in the show. Yeah, that's true. In his dreams, we know this. This is canon. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's an there's an old snail. They're like green 
Uh, they have, like, this purple shell that's, like, slightly dented in, and they've got, like, fuzzy eyebrows. Uh, they also have, like, wrinkly gills on the side of them that, like, when SpongeBob picks them up, uh, SpongeBob plays the gills of this snail like a harp. Gross. And this is... I don't like that. Yeah. So this warms up the snail to him, and the snail's like, oh. And, and Sorry, SpongeBob's can I... like, I... Can I mention something that just kind of creeped into my brain as you were explaining this? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it's the one where I think SpongeBob is tr- is trying to compete for Gary's attention, so he gets a new snail. Yeah. And there's this line that he goes, um, uh, "Gary is really different from G- uh, from Larry, and Gary and Larry are real different from Jerry." <laughs> I don't know why. And is that the I'm... last one like a rock or something? <laughs> no, uh, I think it's so a real snail. Yeah, 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 the live action snail, yes. Okay, so also there's a there's an iteration of that, but it's far less funny and far more horrifying. Oh no. Um Love that comes it. up in this. So SpongeBob names this sa- this snail Senor Poopus and decides to take him home. <laughs> of any name, you pick Senor Poopus. That that feels like a prank call name. <laughs> yeah, like, are we looking for Senor Poopus? Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> can you, can you talk to Mr. Senor Poopus? He's Spanish, so it's really important that you say Senor. There's a brief scene of SpongeBob feeding Senor Poopus and Gary, and Gary and Senor Poopus are playing around. As this happens, Patrick just walks into SpongeBob's kitchen <laughs> and just goes, Oh, you got some snails? This reminds me of some snails I saw, like, under the overpass. We cut to SpongeBob and Patrick going over to the uh, overpass, and there's a bunch of baby snails that need, like, a home. And so SpongeBob decides that he's going to take in these baby snails and feed them. (laughs) And Patrick says, feed them to who? (laughs) Patrick... (laughs) It feels like the essence of Riley is crawling into all of these. <laughs> just just wait. So, SpongeBob and Patrick get back to the house. They have the baby snails in tow. SpongeBob is reading a book about snails, and he says, Oh, it's important to keep the snails warm. And Patrick says, My mouth is warm. No. And the sticks fuck? his hand into his no. mouth. So... I like between those two jokes. It, it, it feels like Patrick wants to eat the snails, which is very strange because that's the equivalent of a human being like, "Man, I want to eat your cat." Again, really? Like, or I want to eat a bunch of kittens. <laughs> SpongeBob's like, "Uh, yeah, good idea, Patrick. Well, but we'll come back to that." And he goes over and he's like, got these like warm milk bottles, and he uh rolls up his like sleeve and then rolls up his like cartoon arm to reveal a live action human arm. And test the temperature of the milk bottles against his live-action human arm. That I have weird, like, memories of. I, I don't- I haven't remembered anything else you've said to me, but I weirdly remember that. It makes me think of, um, Sandy going, If you want arms like these! Yes! Or <laughs> it's like a real, like, tan muscle arm. Yeah, that's so good! <laughs> I love that gag, honestly. See, the thing is, like, old SpongeBob used to use live action, like, a lot for its gags. And this one has another live action gag in it. And it may overlap with a certain gag I mentioned before. SpongeBob gives the milk to the snails. They're all, like, drinking the milk. And Patrick, he looks really disappointed. And at this point in the episode, I couldn't tell whether it's whether or not he, like, wants to keep hanging out with SpongeBob. Uh, or if, like, he wanted to eat the snails, because he's looking longingly at the snails, and he's like, uh, I guess I'll just go. I don't like this new element to Patrick's characterization. Like, like this is odd. He's the bottomless pit. Like, do, do you remember the episode where, like, sp- like, Patrick basically had... I mean, that's the one you were referring to, wasn't it? Where, like, Patrick basically had Gary as a pet for an episode because he had the cookie in his mm-hmm. pocket. And had the, like, iconic, I thought what we had was special line as he's leaving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, Patrick's just in a weird space now, and it's gonna continue. He he, he leaves. It's another head-empty moment. He's operating on absolute pure id. Exactly. Exactly. He puts the id into shid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he did. Oh, my God. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Squid baby So Patrick leaves. So Patrick leaves. It's unclear if there's going to be Vor. Oh, God. 
I remembered while you were talking, Henry, I, I had this horrible intrusive vor thought come into my head. <laughs> Don't like that sentence. I need to vocalize it now, otherwise it's gonna be lost forever. This this episode has had a lot of you vocalizing things that would be better left unsaid. <laughs> But go on, why not? We're this far in. Welcome to Spongebob, boys. You're not ready. Every cat is a nine-course meal. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. I hate this. But that's I gonna, hate this. That's going to end up in Less is Morgue at some point, statistically. Or, or a direwolf video. Or a just, direwolf video. It was between like Evelyn just going, Wow, Riley, nice Spongebob, boys reference. <laughs> yeah. really utterly shameless. Have you seen that show on YouTube? One of the people on it sounds a lot like you. It's kind of spooky. <laughs> that's like that's like season seven of uh, Less is Morg when we've become SpongeBob and Soul. Yeah, out. just like massively <laughs> jumping the shark, being just the most shameless yeah. like sellout pricks. Uh. Todd smiles. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So anyway, the door to Sp it's it's a little it's like some time passes. The door to SpongeBob house opens, and in comes the mother snail that ends up like staying with her babies. And Patrick is back with like a random guy who like found a new snail, and and Patrick's like, hey, check it out, SpongeBob, I got another snail because you seem to have a lot of snails in your house. This snail is given to SpongeBob, and it emerges from its shell, and it has a live action human face. Ah. What the fuck? This is no. fucking. This is Junji Ito again. Go on. And and so and so the snail has a live action human face, and then the eyes on the live action image come out as full eye stalks. You're making this up. Fuck you. This didn't happen. No, I'm not. SpongeBob says I'm calling you Donnie, and it's actually Donnie McKelly, who was a writer for SpongeBob around this time. Ah. It's the face of a guy who's like a SpongeBob crew member? Any time with any of our projects, whether it's Lesser's Morgue or something else, uh, we we feel, hey, oh, wouldn't it be funny for us as ourselves to be in the show? I'm going to think of that, and I'm going to be like, no, it's not funny. <laughs> Don't do it. He got hit with snail plasma. Yeah. It's oh, yeah, they hit him. Not be. He was a teenage snail. Yeah. A teenage Gary, rather. Oh, my. You're right. The lore. That's what happened. I know, like, I know he, like, left the, the uh, Spongebob crew at one point, so maybe that's what happens to people who leave the Spongebob. Like, it, it, Slithering back. Oh. But yeah, yeah. it makes me think of Uzumaki, because you know when, like, people start turning into, like, giant snails in that? Aww. Yeah. In, like, no. the later chapters. Exactly. Fuck. So, Patrick, uh, Patrick shows up and, uh, again... And it's like SpongeBob answers his door again. Some time has passed, and there's a, just another box of assorted snails. And Patrick's in a like car with another different background fish, and he's like, "Hey, here's more snails." And the guy goes, uh, "Thanks, snail guy," and they drive off as Patrick cackles wildly. I don't, I, I can't pin him down in this episode. I don't know what our boy's doing. This is the story of Patrick effectively like, turning SpongeBob into like a crazy cat lady. Um. I mean, <laughs> well, don't spoil where this is going. So, oh. Sp so SpongeBob now has a house full of snails. They're everywhere. He's like rattling off names as he's trying to like lift all these different like bulls and stuff, put them down, and feed all these snails. And he says, like, after he's covered in a bunch of like snail goo, my pants are getting ruined and my head is sticky. I should take a shower. <laughs> Well, that feels like a sentence that just a lot of teenage boys have said. <laughs> ah. You know, we've uh. been there. We don't gotta go into it. SpongeBob <laughs> goes into the bathroom. He disrobes. And he like... I thought you said we weren't getting into it. <laughs> yeah. And here yeah, we no, are. Well, that, no, the, sh the, sh <laughs> the show is getting into it. it the is. show is getting into it. SpongeBob... Rolls around his curtain. It wraps around him like a like a robe, and it looks like a dress now. And then he takes his like rug, his bathroom rug, and puts it over his head. So he's got kind of like like wild like uh I guess like Marge Simpson hair. The like transformation it... is complete. <laughs> that was so sinister. <laughs> Just like the transformation is complete. So yeah, it's so another SpongeBob... thing. It's another thing that follows Lexi around. It's Miss Havisham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that book never leaves. 
<laughs> we cut away from that. We cut away from his transformation to Mr. Krabs in the Krusty Krab. Squidward is like backed up with customers and he's reading a book and he won't take orders because SpongeBob's not in the Krusty Krab. So Mr. Krabs says, okay, you're going to do both jobs. Any idiot could do this. I'm going to go find SpongeBob. <laughs> Okay. And, and so Mr. Krabs goes to find SpongeBob at SpongeBob's house. There's been a whole lot of Squidward having to man both stations. Yeah. Like, yes. legitimately, it would not surprise me if this episode ended with Mr. Krabs cooking all of the excess snails into patties and selling them. No. Like, it wouldn't fucking no. surprise you at all. No. That's a gourmet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I like that. I clean the bathrooms on the gourmet. <laughs> I was the head chef on the SS Diarrhea. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell you, like, it's not the ending of the episode, but wouldn't it be amazing if Pat, uh, Mr. Krabs is like, I know what to do with all these snails. And then it just cuts to, like, a fancy Frenchman in a restaurant, and he, hold, like, he opens the, the plate, and it's just all a bunch of snails. He's like, ho, ho. And, and he's just, like, passing a wad of cash to Mr. Krabs, who leaves. Exactly. Thanks for the snails. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway... Uh, Spongebob, in his shower curtain rug hair form, answers the door. Mr. Krabs immediately, like, smooths back his eyes and turns on the charm because he thinks that Spongebob is a beautiful lady. I didn't want to say it in case it was true, and it is, and I hate it. The thing is, this feels weirdly foreshadowed because I'm just thinking about the, am I a pretty girl? Uh, you're beautiful. And the mailman gives him the eyes and leaves. <laughs> yeah, so, so... This was uh, set up hitting... seasons in yes, advance. Yes, it was all planned. So, it's like Gravity Falls. <laughs> ah, exactly. So Mr. Krabs is like leaning on the imagine. door and he's like, he's like... He's like, I think I may have found the ra- wrong house, but all right. Have you seen my mate Spongebob? And then Spongebob speaks up and he says, Hey, Mr. Krabs. And Mr. Krabs is like, Oh, oh, no, oh, uh, hello, Spongebob. And he's immediately like, Oh, it's Spongebob. Basically, he asks about why Spongebob isn't in work. And Spongebob says like, Oh, no, I've, I've found a new purpose now. I have to raise these snails. And he goes back inside. And Mr. Krabs is just confused and perplexed. And probably a little like confused about his sexuality too yeah. like in the process of this <laughs> Mr. Cubs like okay Spongebob I'll leave you to it but uh next time you do come back into work dress like this he, he calls him something like a like an easy going hula girl too he's like why are you dressed like an easy going hula girl oh my god he, he was in the navy he's had some crazy times yeah you know oh man you know, he hops from port to port but Mr. Krabs I thought we weren't talking about this yeah <laughs> You know, the torpedo in his belly isn't the only reason why they called him Torpedo Belly. I don't oh like God. that. Continue. <laughs> Squidward comes home from working both shifts at the Krusty Krab, and he starts sneezing immediately because of all of the snail stuff around, and uh, it turns out that Squidward is allergic to snails because, you know, just for the sake of this episode. Don't... I know both of you probably know an episode where Squidward has interacted with snails. Or like when he bought that prized snail to win him that competition. But see, they cover it because when he tries to confront Spongebob about this, he's like, I'm allergic to snails. And Spongebob says, even Gary. And Squidward says, like, basically, he might as well be looking into the camera. He says, I can handle like one or maybe two snails, but this many. Good save. So he Mm. he asks Spongebob to identify how many snails are in the yard. And Spongebob's like acting very flaky. Like at first, Spongebob doesn't even know his name. Like it's like, Spongebob, is that you? And Spongebob's like, I don't know. (laughs) And then when it gets down to... uh, when it gets down to counting the snails, SpongeBob rattles off a bunch of names in rapid speed. Squidward gets really mad and he's like, I'm gonna call the authorities on you. And he yells into a phone while his allergies have slowly been meatballing him, like turning him into a full-sized meatball. Ugh. And he's, he's just like, what am I paying taxes for if you're not gonna get rid of these fucking snails? He becomes Mo Moe. For a second there, I thought he actually said the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Let Squidward say fuck. <laughs> he's he's meatballing out. He's sneezing on the customers at work. And uh, Mr. Krab says, look, nobody likes you sneezing on the food except for that guy. Cut to one of those background fish, like the one who's just kind of like a, a purple column with like a super large forehead. And he's <laughs> yeah. eating 
the 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 snot covered Krabby Patties, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like really like freaking like he's creepy about I feel it. Like that was the guy who wrote Greasy Buffoons. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, except this one doesn't have a live action face. Anyway, Squidward leaves because he's now become a full meatball, and he needs to destroy this. Like he needs to make sure SpongeBob gets rid of these snails, and he yells back at Mr. Krabs like, "Any idiot can work all the jobs." And Mr. Krabs kind of relents and, and falls to the floor, sitting on a Krabby Patty. And he's like, oh, you're right. <laughs> and so, uh, then we get into the final stretch of this episode where Patrick returns. And eats all of the snails. <laughs> no. No, it's revealed that he's like, so he wants snail friends, huh? And he comes back and he puts himself into a snail shell and disguises himself as a snail with, like, eye toilet paper roll eye stalks. SpongeBob answers the door and says, "Oh, are you lost, little one? What's your name?" And uh, and Patrick Snail goes, uh, "Uh, Patrick. I mean, uh, meow." And um, Patrick takes him, or SpongeBob takes him into the house, and immediately Patrick wants to leave because he sees all the snails everywhere. But he's forced to remain as a snail, essentially. I hate this. This episode is horrible. So anyway, Meatball Squidward is calling every phone in town to try and get this place shut down. SpongeBob's building a giant enclosure, like fences, to keep the snails in. He just becomes Tiger King. Oh my god! He's just fucking Joe Exotic. Exactly. And SpongeBob's like, the bad men want to take you away from me, but I'm not gonna let that happen. Oh my god. This could be like a Waco situation. So the authorities do show up. Like there's like a like animal control shows up, and SpongeBob screams as he like he's like he's fully mutated now. He's got like sand in his mouth, and he's like sanctuary, sanctuary, everybody in, and all the snails go into his house, and the pineapple like looks like it's like a bag just full of like too many coconuts, like it's about to explode, <laughs> and. Um, it was more charming when who, Squidward's house did it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, the, uh, animal, like, the, the, the car that came here, it, it says on the side, like, Snail Center, and who comes out but a guy named Bob Barnacle, who is a parody of Bob Barker. From The Price is Right? Yeah, well, the guy who says, you know, always spay and neuter your pets. Mm. The price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> and so... <laughs> to immediately think of Happy Gilmore. <laughs> so he shows up... So he shows up and he does essentially like a hostage negotiation with Spongebob to get the snails released. And eventually Spongebob relents and uh, Senor Poopus approaches uh, Bob Barnacle who's been saying like, I'll take the snails to my reserve. A lot of them escaped because there was a hole in the fence. I'll keep them safe. And Senor Poopus goes up to um, him, and he goes, Oh, Esmeralda, I've missed you. And SpongeBob is like, Oh, uh, Miss Senor Poopus' name is Esmeralda? And uh, he, he becomes himself again because he does his typical SpongeBob laugh. And uh, we transition. There's um, a bunch of the snails being loaded back into this snail center like car. And uh, Bob Barnacle is just like, Thank you for bringing Esmeralda back. And uh, SpongeBob's like, I'm going to miss you, uh, Senor Poopus. I mean, Senorita Esmeralda. Basically, as this van is driving away, Bob Barnacle leans out the window and says, don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. Like he's saying the thing. <laughs> nice. And so uh, as this is happening, SpongeBob's waving goodbye to the snails, and it reveals that Patrick is inside the van oh. as a snail. <laughs> and he goes... Bye, SpongeBob. And it, the van starts driving away, and uh, SpongeBob's running down the road, and he's like, Wait, Patrick, I'll adopt you! Nice. <laughs> but then you get the horrifying implication that Bob Barnacle is going to spay and neuter Patrick. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but wait a minute. Don't snails or uh, fucking starfish, don't they reproduce asexually? Like by budding? I don't know. Actually, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a selfish expert. But by spay and or neutering star uh, Patrick, you're going to make two of him anyway. God damn. But you, you know Patrick hangs dong. They, uh, <laughs> I hate, I hate that you said that. I <laughs> hate it. As if that is in the top 100 worst things said on this channel. I'm not even sure it scrapes the top 200, considering the fucking <laughs> Monster Girl videos. <laughs> 
if you've made God. it this far in the comments section, uh, tell us what your favorite cursed dire gentleman moment is. Yeah, <laughs> we'll make a clip show. <laughs> uh, and, exactly. And now we have the bottom layer. We have the all important grease and the patty. Lexi, would you care to lower the bun on top? Absolutely, if I can find it in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, again, this is the second to our uh, Season 7, Episode 1 duo. Uh, right. I feel like this is an episode where a lot of memes have come out of it. I was surprised oh. when I was watching it. There's a good number of memes that have come out of this oh one. It's my. called I Heart Dancing. Oh my god, is this near who put you Whoa. on the planet? Yes! Oh my god. How the fuck I, did they I'm come up with that? Already. <laughs> oh, Gus so, is about to have a weird time. Let's go. <laughs> oh boy. This one, I just wholeheartedly, like, if I ever recommend you watch something before I go and talk about it, please do so. But for you two, you're stuck with my explaining it and then... Possibly watching it after. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone else, pause it. Try and find I Heart Dancing. It's season seven, episode one. Go out. It's great if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> anyway. So nice to end an episode on a on a good episode. Yeah. It's like that time we got Mimic Madness. And that other time, well, that we didn't... Any time we don't get Squid Baby. Again, Lex Lexi got the birth you... Uh, the birth you... Lexi got the birthday magic in this one. I'm not even sure what the birth you was a like portmanteau of. But... <laughs> yeah, obviously birth and Matthew, a name that is <laughs> relevant for some reason. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Jimmy, where the birth fuck is did... short for birth you. Like, where the fuck did Matthew come from? <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is <laughs> happening? Yeah, what, is there a guy named Bartholomew out there who goes by birth you? <laughs> if you're this far in, comment birth you. <laughs> All right, Lexi. Birth you! <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I'm still on a birth is short for birth you. <laughs> you know when people say, oh, you know, I'll give you a wide birth, but it's like, I'll, I'll give you a wide <laughs> oh, birth stop. You. Okay. <laughs> stop. Uh, so it starts with Squidward with his um, Krusty Krab uniform on, i.e. just his hat. He's sneaking out of his house on his way to work. But he gets caught by Spongebob, who then starts tap dancing. Squidward starts to poo-poo on his fun and says, You need music to dance. Spongebob then pushes out his brain. <laughs> he he does the thing where he puts his hands into his, like, where his ears should be. And then on, out the top of his head come his brain. Of oh. course. And you see, like, this radio dial on the side of his brain. And you hear, like, actual music being played, sort of. As he's tuning in, and he stops on this ukulele number. Okay. And, and then we're treated to a scene that I'm sure everyone's seen of Spongebob. Dancing in place, waving his arms, squinting his eyes, and doing that weird fake walk move. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Squid is in the middle of saying that it's the stupidest dance move he's ever seen. Spongebob claps and goes into his, Who put you on the planet? Ugh! <laughs> that move. You got to explain to Gus what that is. I think. So weird. Before it once again becomes the hottest TikTok fucking trend. I can't explain it. I the way I did is the best I can do. So what I'm gonna do is link it in the chat for Gus to watch. It's okay. literally the best thing. I will sit and wait. I don't know if you want to include it in the video or just cut to after your reaction, but please enjoy. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> Oh, I know this dance! What? What is, that? what is that fucking face he does for who put you on the planet? SpongeBob turned into like Bobo -Bo Don Patch for a second there. Like, what yes, the fuck? Yes, he does that? look Don Patch. <laughs> you went, ew, who put you on the planet? So I have a note here that says. There's honestly so much happening right now. Sponge is basically doing dance moves while making and... Oh, no. I'm sorry. I skipped. <laughs> Sponge is based right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's... There's so much that happens in this episode because it's 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 heavily reliant on the animation. Mm. So it's mm. like everything that I try to say, it's not nearly as good as just watching it. 
That's what I'm saying. Okay. Like you, you have to watch it and then try to listen to me try to explain it back. Ironically, it's the episode about interpretive dance, and you're trying to interpret the dance back into words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that dance happens where he says, "Who put you on the planet?" Ugh. And then he <laughs> I, starts moonwalking behind Squidward to work. <laughs> I want Lexi's rendition of that as my like text alert. <laughs> Who put you on the planet? It's so good. (laughs) (laughs) That's what he does, though. (laughs) 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 That's what this episode has become now. (laughs) (laughs) Why waste a bullet? (laughs) (laughs) Who wasted you on the bullet? (laughs) 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 Who bulleted you on the waist? (laughs) 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 The sound of us having simultaneous strokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, so moonwalking behind Squidward, and then my note says, okay, there's honestly so much happening right now. Sponge is basically doing dance moves while making and serving Krabby Patties, and ends his routine in front of an agent, who's like this redhead wearing a like a strapless dress. Mm. <laughs> and she's like, you've got the moves, kid. <laughs> SpongeBob goes, oh, well, uh, thank you very much. And she goes... Wait, I'm not finished speaking words. <laughs> <laughs> like, the delivery is so good. Yeah. Yeah, and then I put another note here that says, This writing and storyboarding is top-notch so far, honestly. If nothing else horrible happens, I recommend watching it. <laughs> Birthday magic. It's real <laughs> shit, dudes. Oh my god, that's excellent. But yeah, so SpongeBob gets offered an audition to be a backup dancer for one of her clients. Squidward, like, overhears it, or he sees SpongeBob walking back, asks about, like, whatever, and he's like, I got an audition. Squidward's like, you got an audition? So <laughs> Squidward plans to sabotage him by basically making him dance until he drops and then to, he'll, he'll then swoop in and steal his potential spot. Okay. During the audition. Mm. It's nice because Squidward's actually being like a jerk in this episode. So it doesn't feel mean when like he gets his for it. Yeah. Okay, so he offers to tutor Spongebob to force him to practice until he drops. So that's the plan. He's going to exhaust <laughs> him and then take his, his spot that's during some, the audition. That's some Bojack Horseman shit. That's something Bojack would, like, do to Todd. <laughs> he would. So his first thing is to tell him to run to Mount Oyster and back. He says, Squidward thinks, like, huh, he's not going to make it back. He's, like, back instantly. Want to see me do it again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then he's instructed to moonwalk on a treadmill while Squidward reads an entire novel. And uh, s- we, like, a-, a time passes and we see Squidward has actually fallen asleep. He wakes up, we walk back into the room where Spongebob is still moonwalking, and the treadmill breaks. Oh my god. Because it's been so long. He outlasted the fucking treadmill. That's a Chad move. <laughs> Those calves, though. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Squidward finally caves and starts to teach him actual dances. He tells Spongebob to do a ribbon dance exactly as he does. And Spongebob does that, and of course, and then more... <laughs> So he forms, like, things in the ribbon. So he makes, like, a helicopter shape with the ribbon. And then he makes a T-Rex that roars. And then he makes a mermaid that swims around and carries him, like, bridal style through the room. I think it's kind of interesting. Like, this is a this is a weirdly, like, serious uh, take. I think it's interesting that there's this running thing throughout the SpongeBob canon of that, like, generally when SpongeBob puts his mind to it, he can be better than, like, all of... Like, he can be better at Squidward at all of Squidward's, like, identity-defining creative ventures, whether it's music, dance, art, in, like, the, like, art-teaching episode. And I think it's interesting how, like, Squidward is this kind of, like, Doug Walker figure of the fact (laughs) that, like, he's someone who clearly has these, like, artistic aspirations, but he just, like isn't good enough that's what it comes back to to. ever really close the gap and realize them i've always read it as like squidward could be good if he were to just loosen up a bit yeah because spongebob goes into these things knowing almost nothing if he were to get out of his own way like squidward kind of forgets that you're supposed to have fun when you do these things and that's actually a good message didn't he have that quote where like i forgot what episode it is 
but he yells something like, blank is art, and art is suffering. And that <laughs> basically, like... I forgot what he was talking about, but, like, I remember him really going, like, suffering! Yeah. And getting, like, you know how Squidward gets, like, a oh big head when he really yells? <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's interesting how fundamentally, even in, like, some of the worst seasons, there is yeah. this, like, running thing of, like, there are fundamentally healthy and unhealthy attitudes to art. Mm-hmm. And, well, that's the thing, too, is that SpongeBob manages to be this, like, wild virtu- virtuoso at everything mm-hmm. because he wants to do it for the sake of it rather than, like, what it means that he's good at it. Yeah, and SpongeBob is, like, unlike Squidward, not obsessed with acclaim because, like, that's where Squidward got involved in the band in Krabby Road. He wanted to be, like, loved and adored by the supporters rather than actually being a good musician like spongebob Mm -hmm. and even to an extent patrick wanted out of that yeah like spongebob does everything he does because he finds fun and joy in it anyway sorry lexi please continue (laughs) no i like this conversation yeah spongebob (laughs) he makes that mermaid squidward takes the ribbon out of spongebob's hand and just stomps on it for a little bit longer than he probably should have and he stomps on it so hard he breaks a hole in the floor and because he told Squ- uh, Spongebob to do exactly as he does, Sp- Spongebob <laughs> also stomps a, flo- a, a hole in his floor. <laughs> Love it. A uh, bubble transition back to the, the upstairs area in Squidward's house. He tells Spongebob to do a Ty and Kane showstopper routine. And obviously Spongebob blows Squid's dance out of the water. And Squid takes the route of making it sound like Spongebob needs hours of training to get his moves to look just like his. Exact tactics he used in the art episode. Which I would kind of be mad about that it's kind of just a rehash of the art episode. But like, I the way it's being written and the way it's being presented, it feels like that's just how Squidward tries to get around Spongebob being better than him. Yeah, it's, it's like a kind of Mozart and like, is it Salieri thing? Mm-hmm. of just, like, the the rage and the inadequacy of being outshined. Mm, yeah. Play Squidward tentacles. Okay, so Squidward does this, like, one, two, three uh, phase dance move that ends in, like, a half split, and he tells SpongeBob to do that and, and keep doing it until he gets a perfect, like, exactly. Funny enough, SpongeBob actually has trouble doing Squidward's moves. And that's where I'm kind of getting the idea that Spongebob doesn't really go into these things knowing a whole lot. He does it with feeling. Yes, he does it with a feel. (laughs) So it does take Spongebob all night to master it, and he is exhausted. Squidward then proceeds to run Spongebob ragged until he drops into a deep sleep on the floor. Squidward is a dickhead in this one. Um, So we bubble cut to the audition, where we see a pair of twins doing a cute routine. And it's so cute that it's too cute and they get rejected. (laughs) The auditioner is like, okay, who's next? SpongeBob SquarePants? Doesn't look like he's here. Uh, Where am I going to find a stroke of genius in this um, time frame? Squidward's just already there. Like, don't worry, I'm here. So Squid dances in SpongeBob's place. What do you guys think? What do you think happens? He he does this very, like, cringeworthy, stilted thing. And the judges hate it. I think he's going to be, like, hyping himself up and then his performance is just a little too weird. Like, when the episode where he was doing the thing that made the fish go, like, what the? (laughs) Like the New Age interpretive dance. Oh, this cat. Excuse me. Yeah, the... Like that. The Squidward dancing. Damn, son, where'd you find this? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so he does, like, this um, ballet move where he's up on a tiptoe and he's bouncing up up and down in a beat and crossing his other leg uh, back and forth in front of the other one. <laughs> For some reason, mm. he nails the audition. Oh. That's a shock. Squid gets a victory. Yeah, I was That's not expecting twist. that at all. Yeah, so he gets to dance... Back up for Squilliam. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, my God. And the dance that he wants Squidward to do and learn until he gets it right 
is the routine that SpongeBob opened the episode with, with, who put you on the planet? Ugh. <laughs> Fucking God. <laughs> and then we see SpongeBob and Patrick in the auditorium eating snacks and watching, and we see SpongeBob go, I almost had that part, <laughs> and the episode closes. Oh my fucking god. Wait, really? My, my this episode request, is a delight. I, I know a lot of people watch these videos to draw. I request someone out in the nation who is a fan of this and less is more <laughs> to draw Riley doing the who put you on the planet thing. <laughs> <laughs> I beseech thee, tag Gus or like Lexi or both and less is more on Twitter and we'll share it. I absolutely need yes. to watch this episode because, like, who put you on the planet? That's just that's just me. Like, <laughs> that, like I, I feel seen by that. <laughs> it's so good. Please watch season seven, episode one. I heart dancing. Uh, you know, some weird bits aside, this is an overall pretty damn like merciful episode of SpongeBob Boys. Pretty positive, yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was some Junchi Ito moments, but other than that... <laughs> like, there's nothing truly egregious in it for the yeah. most part. Like, that's the thing. I think that we've reached an e equilibrium where, like, the general, like, the average modern Spongebob episode doesn't have anything we're not ready for. Yeah. That, that's, that's not to say the same of the audience, because, of course, they're never ready. But of course. we're starting <laughs> we're starting to acclimate on the other side of this. We're becoming SpongeBob boys. Yeah, yes. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think we just we go off on the right foot hearing about Lexi's delightful SpongeBob themed birthday party. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm sure Gus <laughs> put all those pictures up on the screen. And then this picture too. I, I like, you know, this this one. I don't know why this one's here, but like that's gonna be fun to know what I edit in. It's, it's just like some fucking like rotten.com style like gore awfulness. No, I can't do that. This is YouTube. What do you think this is? The Squidward House Party Show? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a clip oh, from that's... my favorite movie, Greasy Buffoons. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Squid Baby. The Greasy Buffoon Strangler. Oh man. Well. This certainly God. has been SpongeBob Boys. You are not ready, and who, who put, put you, you on, on the, the planet? planet? Uh. Uh.